as far as youth unemployment is concerned. Startling statistics, 50% of young people say they do not care what means they use to get a job. And joining me right now is Yusuf Jeddah, who is the CEO of Zebra Jobs. Many thanks for joining us this afternoon. Thank what you do you make much. of this statistic, Jeddah? Um, yeah, this is uh, pretty scary uh, because uh, uh, quite a lot of attitude change are we seeing with the youth. Uh, many of them are thinking that they basically can do anything and uh, do, and they're not, they're not career minded. And uh, it's a bit scary because when you don't have people that are focusing on the career and the uh, companies cannot grow, so the growth of uh, an individual is uh, directly uh, impact the growth of a company. So mm -hmm. it's a bit, uh, well, looking at these statistics, uh, Jeddah, 30% um, have exuded the belief that corruption is profitable. Um, are young people losing their morals? Or who is to blame, really? Well, um, first of all, I think we need to understand the younger generation. Uh, the way they think, you know, they're, they're known as a millennial generation or generation Y, the way they think is completely different from the generation X or from the older generation. Yeah. Uh, so we need to actually recognize that differences and start to appreciate what it means and instead of opposing it because it's a completely different view from what we are used to. Mm -hmm. um, because when you start going in into labeling them that they don't have a, a value or they don't have ethics or ethics in general, it's a very dangerous thing because as you said, you know, uh, more than half of the population is the use. Yeah. Um, so you cannot really dismiss it or you cannot just ignore it. Um, we, we need to understand it. We need to understand how they think, how they do things. To them, a lot of things are very intuitive they're not necessarily uh, learned or studied. They, they know them by intuitively. Mm -hmm. uh, my generation, we were taught uh, or we studied to know something. Uh, we had to study the operation of a computer, uh, taking computer classes to understand how a computer works. Uh -huh. uh, but nowadays, those people, young people, don't need that. They okay. Intuitively, they can understand it. So their thinking is completely different. Mm -hmm. Perhaps, uh, Yusuf, Looking at the unemployment situation we have, you're talking about 40% of the youth full population do not have jobs. They're mm -hmm. typically or basically jobless. Correct. This simply means out of 10 young people, four do not have a job. Perhaps, how did we get here in the first place as a country? Uh, because uh, um, the, the, the use, uh, the growing of the use is much faster than the jobs that are available. Um, in Kenya, as you know, we also had a very extensive education for all program where we educated quite a number of people. That's true. Uh, that a lot of people have become educated. A lot of pe people actually been self-taught, they became educated. Unfortunately, the, the growth of the job did not match with the growth of the youth population as well as the educated population. That's, uh, there is a, uh, a mis connect in here and uh, not enough our jobs are not being created, not investments are not coming and this is okay. what led to. Of course uh, the government did pledge to create a million jobs per year. Mm -hmm. We are talking about them creating about 700,000 per year. This is just in the formal sector. Okay. The informal sector has also been registering some sense of growth, uh, absorbing quite a good chunk of young people through SMEs. and. Of course, majority of the Kenyans and the young people like to search for jobs. They normally buy the newspaper, preferably the standard on Fridays, just mm -hmm. to scan through the pages and, and see what jobs are there. Mm -hmm. But are we seeing a change of heart where young people are now on the online platforms? I know you run a company that is quite strong on virtual job search. Just tell us about the trends you're seeing in job search. Yeah, uh, correct. Um, I think the technology is playing a, a great role now. Uh, many of the young people, uh, they use social medias, SMS, MMS, all those types of uh, 
messaging system, uh, they receive the job alert through that. In fact, uh, the readership for the use is going down the, on the newspaper, so they rely on those technology. Um, because nowadays we need to reach out to vast number of people, uh, irrespective of their location. Uh, if uh, people do not have to be in Nairobi or anything, uh, physical, physical presence is no longer a requirement for finding a job because mm -hmm. they can see through the internet, through the websites, through the social media, so different methods that they can see okay. and that's where it's going. Uh -huh. So from your interaction with the Kenyan market, mm. um, tell us a little bit more in terms of what you intend to do through the virtual job search that okay. you are okay. likely to launch sometime. Yes. I don't know if it's next month. Yes, next month. So what basically we are trying to introduce is a different method of uh, connecting employers and the job seekers. This is going to be a virtual job fair. Uh, you would think of it like a, a physical job fair that are that, is that usually happens at KICC. KICC, exactly. Or the big uh, institutions. Yes. Yeah. Well, that gives an opportunity for uh, employers and job seekers to meet face-to-face -face and a physical uh, contact. But it also had a limitation. Uh, um, quite a number of people cannot travel to KICC to meet with the employers. There are Kenyan in the diaspora who want to come back to Kenya and look for a job, but they cannot just fly in and meet with the employers. Um, so this virtual job fair basically, it will simulate a physical job fair, but allow job seekers from all over the world to meet with the recruiters at that virtual job fair and be able to chat, uh, video Skype, download information, look at a video. So everything that what you would have find at a physical job fair, mm -hmm. except the handshake, everything else is going to be okay. on this virtual job fair. Just mm -hmm. been for us a typical scenario where assuming myself, Abby, have gone online and I want to partake of this uh, online job search. What does it take? Uh, for job seekers, there's no charge, no whatsoever. Uh, they can just register, they need to upload their CV. And uh, at that day on May 27, they just need to appear on their computer or on their phone because it's also responsive to the telephone and the tablets. And uh, they search for the companies. If they find the company that they want, they click on it and uh, um, communicate with the, with the okay. company. Uh -huh. And um, speaking about online job searches, uh -huh. of course, we've seen increased uptake of internet in Kenya, uh -huh. yes. this thanks to dropping costs, yes. where Kenya has invested significantly in fiber optic, Correct. and even 4G is right now available in most parts of Nairobi. But for the young person, what are some of the other issues that are likely to come up in an online job search and online interviews. What sort of tips would you provide to someone who maybe has a Skype interview or is likely to do an interview online? What is your advice? Yeah, correct. Uh, people need to understand this is just a virtual job fair that has a, a, a tool or a, a method to meet with an employer. Everything else that they were supposed to do in a physical job fair, they're expected to do it here. Uh, that they're expected to be professional and they're expected to read about the companies. Uh, they're expected also to be ready to, uh, to respond to the questions on the spot, like they would have been asked at the actual physical job fair. And here also a company representative can ask them a very quick question to gauge their motivation and interest uh, for the future use. So uh -huh. I, would, I would encourage all the job seekers to be prepared for this, but we will have all those information on how to win, how to be successful on our mm -hmm. website, zebrajobs.com. Okay. And Reja, before we wrap up this conversation, I would like to know how can people also be um, vigilant to avoid being conned? There's a lot of buzz on social media, on websites, mm -hmm. um, websites promising young people jobs. Yeah. How do you know which site is genuine and how do you avoid being uh, in a situation where you're conned? Yeah, that's, I'm glad you, you brought that up because uh, quite a lot of them now. Even you can find those jobs in a legitimate job board by advertising because you know the, the owner of the job board or the, the management of the job board have no means of looking at all the jobs that have been uh, 
uh, advertise. So you can even find them in a very respected uh, job site. As, as very through, the only thing I can say is uh, if any company or anybody asks you to pay for securing a job, that's when you know it is also a bogus. Another one to know is mainly, even though, let's say for example, if they use the name of KQ, but you also should look at the extension kq at gmail.com or something like that, okay. that are also gives it as a fake email address. Many thanks, Yusuf Reja there. Thank you very much. Chief Take Executive care. Officer of Zebra Jobs, just mm -hmm. helping us dissect some of the issues around job search and some of the trends that we are likely to see and if my director is ready, we can now cross over to get what's happening on the stock markets in regard to how the markets have been performing. Of course, we've seen a lot of impact coming in from uh, foreign markets. Um, the shilling trading quite steady and we also expect a lot to happen in regard to the coming days on 